Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is you're watching this. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause or youtube.com forward slash ice cream applause or all of the podcast services dot com slash <laughs> ice cream. I don't think that's the same. But anyway, good morning. My name is Graham Dead. As you can see, if you're watching the video services on screen, I'm joined by the man that we call Pibby. Oi, oi. Now then, now then, uh, now then, I see there's a distinct lack of face mask, no hand sanitizer in sight. No, I've just I've just spent 10 minutes putting new hand cream into the little dispenser that we've got in the bathrooms, though, because... I went to the toilet in the men's, there was none left. Can so, I take a bibber? Yeah, so I went into the ladies, they had fucking loads. So I got the five litre bottle, poured it straight into ours. Honestly. Honestly. You know honestly. what I mean? I'm looking after everyone. This is, this, is, this is the service. This is the service. Anyway, welcome. We are Ice Cream. This is the scoop. Your daily dose of news from the games industry and beyond. And today is a pretty tasty program. Obviously, we had uh, a lot of news coming yesterday around the Xbox Series X, but we will jump into that shortly as I just about to burp. Give me one second. <laughs> Didn't want to do that down the microphone. Good morning, good morning. Um, so we are the world's greatest, not just the UK, but the world's greatest podcast. Self proclaimed. Self proclaimed, it's um, fine. Uh, and as I mentioned already, my name is Graham Dan. I'm joined by the man that we call Baby. We give you our thoughts and impressions on the breaking news stories each and every single weekday at 10 a.m. live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream plus. Like I said, we give you our thoughts and impressions and what we want in return is your thoughts and impressions. So if you're in the chat, please feel free to respond. Just like Enix has done with Yo Miz, my bro Miz. I don't know if he's got some sort of uh, problem, but thank you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Good morning, Jordan. How the hell are you? Um, so yes, if you are in the chat, please feel free to get involved. Like I said, let us know your thoughts and opinions. We want those. And that's important that you do that because we turn this into a standalone video and an audio podcast that we upload to uh, four different podcast services later in the day. The video goes live on YouTube and then later on in the day we have uh, the audio podcast going on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud and Google Play. So feel free to get involved in the chat. Even if it's just to tell us that you are self-isolated, quarantined and have run out of toilet roll and you're at the verge of needing to do a test. <laughs> Whatever it is, please feel free to let us know. Uh, so, should we start? We shall. We should. We shall. We shall. We've got things to do. We've got quite a bit to run through in in uh, content wise. So hopefully we'll try skim through it as fast enough so we don't drag, but also do enough that we give you all of the detail. So jumping onto the first bit of news, and it's a doozy. Uh, this written by PC, uh, written for PC gamer by Paul Lilly. The article says the Xbox Series X is basically a monster gaming PC, which is. Good news for me. Uh, Microsoft reveals more details about the hardware powering the Xbox Series X, and it's seriously impressive. Uh, the Xbox Series X isn't even out yet, and I have already uh, already have upgrade Ember. I'm still holding the line with a core i7-4790K Devil's Canyon processor at my main PC, flanked by a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti and 32 gigs of RAM. It's not exactly a slow rig by any means, even now, uh, even with an outdated CPU, but the newly revealed specs of the Xbox Series X certainly outguns it in most areas. In fact, they could even outgun a high-end gaming PC that you could build today. Uh, the Xbox Series X is burlier than most current gaming PCs based on what Microsoft divulged in a blog post today. Granted, we all knew the Xbox Series X was bringing some serious hardware to the table, but now we have some real specs to process it. Let's go to it. Uh, let's get to it even. And this is going to be very numbers heavy, so we will try skip through it as much as possible so we can make sense of it at the end. If you don't understand all the jargon, because admittedly I know some of it, but not all of it. So starting with the CPU, uh, the custom Zen 2 chip inside the Xbox Series X is rocking 8 core at 3.8 gigs uh, or 3.66 gigs if a develop developer chooses to leverage simultaneous multi-threading, which I always do. I mean, I mean, yeah, a lot. Of, all the threading. Yeah, simultaneously, all the time. <laughs> um, so that's AMD's equivalent to Intel's hyper-threading. This essentially breaks up physical cores into virtual cores or threads to crank through workloads more efficiently. So it's, understand that. it's faster. Yeah, I, I understand that part. <laughs> Just say it's faster. That's all you need to say. So the Xbox Series X is using a custom CPU, so there is no direct equivalent on the PC. However, the closest in terms of specs is the Ryzen 7 3, uh, 3700X, a $300 CPU which features eight cores and 16 threads clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, uh, base to 4.4 gigahertz max boost. It's one of the best CPUs for gaming, though not quite on par with Intel's uh, Core i7-9700. 
On the graphics side, we know the Xbox Series X was tapping a custom GPU based on AMD's next generation RDNA2 architecture. Microsoft previously uh, said it would serve up 12 teraflops of graphics power. It's hard to glean too much uh, from a teraflop figure, but now Microsoft has revealed it will feature 52 compute units clocked at 1.852 gigahertz. Yes. Things. Uh, the bit that I understand there, uh, 16 gigs of uh, RDR6, uh, GDDR6 even memory. I thought it was RDRs, but there we go, GDDR6. Um, so to put that into perspective, a Radeon RX 5700 XT based on RDNA, RDNA 1 wields four ECUs. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, can we find something that, that will just give us a similar? So the GPU inside the Xbox Series X has 30% more compute units, twice the memory, a faster clock, and a fatter memory bus. On top of all that, it will benefit from whatever architectural upgrades RDNA 2 introduces. And let's not forget about the, spot, uh, the support for real-time ray tracing. Uh, Xbox Series X, this is a quote in the article, by the way, and Xbox Series X is the biggest generational leap of uh, system on a chip and API design that we've done with Microsoft. And it's really an honor for AMD to be trusted, uh, to be a trusted Microsoft partner for this endeavor. AMD's Sebastian Nussbaum said, the Xbox Series X is going to be a beacon of technical innovation leadership for this console generation and will propagate the innovation throughout the DirectX ecosystem this year and into next year. Um, Microsoft's target performance is being able to maintain 60 frames per second at 4K and up to 120 uh, frames per second at lower resolutions, presumably um, 1080p. Where have you heard that before? Uh, was that not the current gen sort of like? Uh, well, that was arguably what Stadia said that they were going to produce, which is obviously not the case. But I suppose we'll find out on Friday because the main game that they was showing or saying that was going to feature those uh, credentials would be Doom Eternal. Which is... 2K upscaled ish. Uh, as, well, that's as what a... currently what they've got. They said it was meant to be native 4K <clears> 60 <throat> FPS, but no game that they brought out on Stadia has come close to even hitting that yet. No, 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 no. Um, okay, jumping back, I'll try. Uh, there we go. Well, we, we don't have too much left of the article actually, so we shouldn't have to go too much numbers heavier. I will jump back up to the bullet pointed list so we can pick things apart there later on. Um, so, on the storage side, uh, the Xbox Series X comes with a custom 1TB NVMe solid-state drive, which can be doubled by way of a proprietary expansion slot. That was supposed to be proprietary, <laughs> by the way. Uh, that's right, memory cards are back! Uh, if upgrading the storage with a proprietary slot, uh, Microsoft says speeds will be the same as the speedy internal SSD, so expect those to be expensive. Users can also add an external drive via USB 3.2 to store games on, but it won't run as fast, and you'll have to transfer games to internal memory to actually run them. Yeah. Uh, which is a negative, in my opinion. But uh, one thing that plays into this is what Microsoft is calling Xbox Velocity Architecture. Um, I mean, they could just call it Jim, but there's not enough syllables there. It's fancy. It's a fancy term for what the, uh, boils down to tighter integration between storage and software, which is optimized for streaming in-game assets. This will unlock new capabilities that will never been seen before in console development, allowing 100 gigabytes of game assets to be instantly accessible by the developer. The components of the Xbox Velocity architecture all combine to create an effective multiplier on physical memory that is quite literally a game changer, Microsoft explains. Microsoft provided uh, some more details to digital foundry for anyone who wants to take a deeper dive into the upcoming console and its features and capabilities in short too late i know uh, it's a monster gaming pc in console garb making a direct comparison is still hard to do because amd has not yet released any gpus for the pc that are based on rdna2 but those are coming this year in the meantime i'm going to start plotting out my pc upgrade uh just before we jump into that um i'm dying today erg i'm eating berries because the shells have literally been rinsed well uh, you know berries are good for you fruit and that it's five a day get, get well soon get mm -hmm. well soon uh so you were gonna say something then but i uh carried on uh flying through was do you, do you remember it was it was when we we're talking about the uh memory card slots and proprietary oh no cards. i would just i would just go ooh. Oh, okay um, um but i do have an opinion on it though I would have thought, like what they've mentioned in there, that you would not be able to load the game up from just a USB stick. <clears throat> didn't thought that I didn't think that would be the case. I don't think you, can you can you do that on PlayStation Two now? I've I've still got my base PS Two. I ain't got a PS Four Pro. Uh, it's PS Two. <laughs> I've still got my my base PS Four, so it's just a five hundred gig one. I didn't buy an expandable storage bay. I didn't buy anything else for it. So I'm literally just using the same five hundred gigs that I had on release. I know people. Um, 
now put their games on uh, external hard drives to boot from. If if that person, so say I had the Xbox external hard drive, if I take that to your PlayStation and plug it in, can I play my games from that? Pass, never done it. Um, I know that you can boot them from the hard drive, but I don't know how that works in terms of whether it has to load your profile onto a hard drive so that you can do some sort of digital handshake and go, well, you've got this game, that's yeah. fine, or not. Well, I'd imagine that it would probably, actually thinking about it process-wise, it would be the same way that when the game starts loading, if you try load... If you have your account on a PlayStation that I have mine account on, and I've downloaded PUBG and played it, and you tried to log in and go, you've not purchased this, insert a disc or buy it, I mm. reckon it would probably do that. It would load it to the point where it goes, nope, you can't play it. Yeah, well, you, the only way, the way to get around that is for have you to have be the primary console user in it, and then, and then you, you can load it from there so yeah. I can play it then. Um, but I thought that would be the case with that. The fact that it is going to be an expensive piece of kit not just the SSD stuff, we can understand that being expensive because they are still expensive. But the um, the expandable stuff uh, that is just going to be... Do you remember how expensive PS2 cards was when they first came out, the memory cards? They were like... They were like... What was it? It was it was something like... Uh, they were linked to individual accounts, so I need to log into it, uh, that account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah they were like 50-odd quid or yeah. whatever, but at that time, that was like stupid money. I remember getting a PS2 for Christmas. I got... What did I get with it? I got Three Kings, the DVD with George Clooney, Ice Cube, and Mark Wahlberg. What a film, by the way. If you haven't seen that film, watch it. It's amazing. Uh, I'm sure I got Pro Evo 1 and SSX Tricky. I'm sure they were the games that I got with it. And I remember not tricky, being able... Tricky, tricky, tricky. <laughs> I remember not being able to save anything because I didn't have a memory card. Just, I'm just going to play through yeah. the story and stop. Yeah. And then I'm going to start oh. it again. And, and the stop. Bouncer as well, if you've never played that. That was amazing. That was, uh, I, it, I say it was amazing games for the time, but I doubt it's held up well, but... Uh, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't save it, and they was like fifty quid, so I had to wait um, until I think it was New Year's Day because I went down on Boxing Day to Argos, didn't have any there. Woolworths didn't have any there back in the day when Woolworths was a thing. Do you know? Uh, completely off topic. I heard someone saying Woolworths is supposed to be coming back. Like, it, it's back in other countries. It's just not back over here. Yeah, yet, so was, like, like I heard someone say it was coming back. I was like, oh, is it going to do like a Zavi and go online? But no, apparently they're coming back to the high street. Apparently, apparently. Mm. I mean, anyway, back on topic. Mm. Um, well, yeah, that's going to be hella expensive because if they're having to use the same speeds as what the SSD is internally, I can't imagine how much the memory card's going to be. Yeah, I mean, the, the word that worries me is proprietary. Uh, any sort of proprietary expansion adds cost. Um, so we look at we look at the PS1 uh, memory card. Obviously, it wasn't too bad then. It was only 16 gig memory card. And by Nine the... Eight. Hmm? Nine was eight. Eight, that's the one. It was PS... Oh, no, that was 32, wasn't it? I've got uh, a 32 gigabyte one now for my PS2, but I've, when the when they came out originally, I'm sure it was just eight. eight uh, what for PS2? Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, anyway, short little like they were about that sort of size, little grey memory cards. If you're listening, then I'm making sizes up with my hands. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you had to buy those. I mean, obviously, I think one came with it, uh, as far as I remember, on the PS1 sort of time, so it wasn't too bad then. But when you started filling them up, you had to spend extra, and and that's something we kind of, we've got to a point where that t that doesn't happen. Obviously, there, there are all sorts of proprietary extras, so like, obviously, PSVR, that's not so much a proprietary extra as you have to kind of buy yeah. into that mindset. I mean, I suppose you could argue that buying the move controls and stuff is extra to the VR and bits yeah. like that. But when it comes to memory and things like that, we've got to the point where you can buy a bigger console or you can just stick a new... Uh, um, like, a PS3, it was a SATA drive, and I don't know yeah. what it is on PS4. It's just a universal hard drive, isn't it? But, but now when we get into the point where it's proprietary, the reasoning for that is, uh, as it kind of mentions uh, in there, uh, a custom one terabyte NVMe solid-state drive. Um, that's the key word there is custom. The fact that this is using an NVMe SSD means that this is plugging directly into the system mm -hmm. and spaffing that data into the console. Uh, so much data at such a high speed, they've kind of had to make something new to make sure yeah. that you can play games, which is amazing for you as a consumer sitting there playing a game. But, but like, let's let's rewind ten days, not even that, seven days or whatever it was when when. Uh, Warzone hit consoles. Did yeah. you did you get a hundred and one gigabyte update for your console? Uh, 
I'm sure the game was like 80 gig. Uh, it, was, it was between 80 and 100. Mine was like 101 gig or something like that. God knows why. I don't know if that's because I'm on a pro or something, if it makes Ooh. a difference or not. But anyway, 100 gig. So if if I get that 100 gig, I play GTA, which is probably 100 and something gig or yeah. whatever, and then suddenly I'm I'm halfway through my uh, one terabyte hard drive straight away before I'm playing a game that's optimised for 4K 60 FPS as yeah. a minimum, or 120 FPS, 1080p, as we've as said in the article, you get four of those games on it, your hard drive is done. Well, it is for me. You've got a one terabyte one, haven't you? But my 500 gig one, I've literally got... Well, you went, you get Call games. of Duty and Grand Theft Auto and you can get one more game. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly, I've, got, I've got three games on my PlayStation at the but, moment. But don't worry, you can you can add an extra hard drive on. But mm. if you look at like adding another one terabyte custom-made uh, NVMe SSD, it's, the issue there is the custom bit. I mean, they will eventually get to yeah. the point where you'll probably get... Um, I can't think of any hard drive manufacturers' companies. Seagate. Seagate, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, Seagate, if they aren't partnered with them or are approved or whatever, they will start de uh, delivering that stuff, but it usually takes a bit of time before uh, they get. we start mm -hmm. getting that hardware out. So at the moment, like, when it launches, you'll have one terabyte... Uh, uh, you can have one terabyte uh, NVMe solid-state drive, and then you can buy expandable storage, one terabyte expansion card, uh, it says in this list. I'll bring the list back up, actually. Um, I've still got it on the screen. Yeah. But uh, just before you get into that, Asim's made a good point there. You're saying just like the expensive Vita cards. Now, for me, the main reason why Vita actually failed in the first place was literally because of that. It, it, yeah, it was, what was it? Big zombie monkey. Thank you very much, Spike, for the three months. I told month, my 11-year-old uh, uh, daughter I thought Fortnite was a stupid name. I told my 11-year-old daughter I thought Fortnite was a stupid name. I think it is just too I think it's weak. just too weak. He's, he stole that from me. I posted that in Beans' chat the other day. <laughs> Uh, although I was, I was saying, I said to, well, the way I phrased it was like um, Warzone. That's a proper strong yeah. name for a BR, not like Fortnite. That's just too weak. And there you go, there you go. Uh, streams reading it out by the way. Oh, I forgot we had TTS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, Venom. Good morning, Venom. Uh, wh when are you making your your like tonight. Twitch debut? Is it tonight? Yeah, okay. I think it's like six thirty tonight. Oh well, I'll make sure that we drop a, a host in the stream Absolutely. then for you, Venom, because yeah, we, we want to see if, if anyone's in the chat. Um, obviously, feel free to uh, drop Spike, uh, Asim, and everyone else uh, in the chat a follow. But Venom uh, is is a very, very, very nice guy, and is do you know what? He's not quite at mine and Bibby's level, but he's he's half decent at Pez. So yeah, if you want to see a world class Pez stream, then tune into Venom tonight. Drop and follow. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Uh, so um, uh, two I, things. I want to clear. I want to clear the air here with Spike. The amount of time he give a shit for playing battle royale games, and I all weekend. I've seen him been playing Warzone. You can get to fuck, mate. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not having it anymore. I am not having it from you anymore. I don't want to see the falling asleep emote in the chat anymore. I don't want to see any of that shit. You're, you're in now. That's it. The line has been drawn. You are in the Battle Royale um, Although, mindset. To be fair, I mean, I do agree with that entirely, but to be fair, Warzone has that arcade feel that's fun. That... No, fuck you. And, you're, nah. <laughs> and that's, that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, jumping back up, uh, I was I always thought it was known that the hard drive add-on for the PS2 didn't get released over here. Uh, I didn't even know that existed. Yes, they did on the fat PS2. Originally, I'm sure they brought. Well, they did 100% bring out a um, external. But you know the, the back of the fat ones that had like a big bay at the back that was open. Uh, it was to put a hard drive in to play Final Fantasy. Eleven. To eleven. No. Ten, no, it ten was ten. on the PS2. I yeah, I remember that. But that, and, uh, as I say every time, only because I played Blitzball and that was it. I want to say eleven. Final Fantasy eleven came out on the PS PlayStation Two and it was online. Uh, Fantasy Star Online. I'm ninety five percent sure was also on the PS2, but it required um, to have an Ethernet cable plugged into the back of it. <laughs> Yachted to burp. Yeah, I know. I'm trying. To, I was trying to cover that there. I didn't do a very good job, obviously. Um, but you had to put a hard drive and an Ethernet cable into the back of your PlayStation, and that's what the big port was for at the back. When they made the slimline ones, they put the Ethernet cable already in there. Yeah, well, um, I saw someone that turned that port into a toaster, so who's, who's the real winner? <laughs> uh, there you go. Stick your hard drives up, yo. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, where was Asim's coming? Uh, listen, I guess uh, due to the SSD, not great but understandable. They probably come down over the years. Big question is, what's the, uh, the base storage of the console? One terabyte, two terabyte. It has to be a terabyte it's, minimum. It's one terabyte minimum. base. Um, oh yeah, we've with, got it here, haven't we? Yeah, one terabyte base with uh, one terabyte expansion. Uh, so 
no doubt they'll have a two terabyte update or yeah. something coming later on or they'll have like the xbox series x one x pro x xxx uh, i think you're probably looking at for another terabyte ssd you i want to put out there it's going to be about 150 sheets i'd say 250 you reckon for the yeah. one for the one terabyte i see i was going to go <clears> two <throat> terabyte i would have said 250 I reckon it's going to be in uh, staggered installments. I, I think like that. I think there's a couple of bits. The, the fact that it's an SSD, uh, the fact that it's an NVMe SSD, mm. one terabyte. It's the custom bit, though. I think will uh, yeah. because it's proprietary. It's, it's made for purpose. I, I think that will just add to the cost of the. Mm -hmm. uh, make, do you know what? I mean, I'd, I'd I'd be more likely to say I would see it closer to three than two hundred. I mean, not not that I think that's justifiable. I think nobody will want to pay for yeah. that. But I reckon if it doesn't hit two fifty, um, then yeah, maybe two hundred. But I reckon it's going to be somewhere there or thereabouts. Do you reckon then there's going to be a bundle up on launch for the one terabyte base console, and then if you want the two or three terabyte one, then you're looking at an extra two to. 300 to 400. Depends where you're buying it. I mean, if you're going to buy it in game, <laughs> then... I was waiting for that. <laughs> Can you just run the DC or mortgage through here, please? <laughs> Bibi, you have a house? Yeah. Not anymore! <laughs> forget about... Samantha, forget about the conservatory in the bay windows. It's not happening. We're getting this in instead. Um, but, yeah, I, I can see a very small bundle happening uh, upon launch because... One gigabyte, one terabyte isn't enough. I'm str I'm struggling. I'm lucky that I don't play my PlayStation that often anymore. Anyway, I just play my PC. So if I was to get games like uh, Call of Duty on my PlayStation, I would literally have one or two games installed on it. Now it's got to a point where the menus take to take forever to load up because my hard drive's just been in there for so long now that it's just starting to fall apart. Um, but for a for a base console, I don't I don't think this day and age one terabyte is enough. See, I, the the thing is though, we aren't in this day and age. We will be in tomorrow's day and age. Yeah. Today we're playing uh, games that have yeah we have 4K if you're playing uh, Pro or uh, Xbox One X, but everything will be 4K minimum plus the fact that they have uh nvme uh, ssd drives they can pull so much detail through faster yeah. games will become bigger that's what it is they, they realize actually the, the thing that stops the games from being heavy isn't uh so much the storage space it's how much they can call on at once and the fact yeah. that we'll have much better faster processing uh power from the gpus i mean 12 teraflops custom rdna2 ban that oh, okay no, I actually do want to become famous. Buy followers, <laughs> primes and viewers on following bot. Uh, how, how can you see from there? There we go, Bob. Oh, uh, there we go. Nice work. Uh, Buy reverse flow. Get out of here. Um, yeah, oh. so, so we have uh, the ability to pull on uh, 12 teraflops of data at any one point in time. Um, we'll see bigger, more readily available assets mm -hmm. for any... Any point of time in your gameplay, there'll be more assets yeah. that can be called an uh, asses. Assets that can be called an <laughs> call them that ass. Um, so it, games will become bigger uh, in terms of 100 gig for Call of Duty. We're all good. Yeah. Need to get that downloading a day before. Soon it'll be like okay, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Six. Get that downloading two weeks before. Well, if you think back to seven years ago when we, when we first started play, playing PlayStation Four and Xbox One X games. Uh, Using using PS3 as an example, for instance, the games that was at the back end of the console cycle were a lot better looking. They used a lot more of the CPU and the RAM and everything that was available to the developers to try and make the best games possible. We're at a point now where we are at the same with the PS4. We've got games like free-to-play games that are 150 gigabytes. That's unheard of compared to the rest of the free-to-play games that are Battle Royale games. Uh, there's a lot more games that do look a lot better than the games that came out at the beginning of the PS4. So at the beginning of the PS5 and the Xbox uh, Series X, how big is the game going to be? And then four or five years down the line, what's yeah. the size of the game going to be then? Because I think you will see the progression. Uh, like We all started bulking at the idea of games passing 100 gig downloads. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't a thing at the start of the generation. It's it's a, a regular thing now. We've had yeah. a few games this year that have done the same thing. So the fact that we can expand it is good. Um, definitely, definitely is. My my worry, though, is, like I say, the use of the word proprietary. Where was it? Asim's comment mentioned about the Vita. Um, uh, For me, that was the reason why the Vita, the Vita died. Do you reckon that the... Those expensive Vita cards, there we yeah. go. Yeah. Do you reckon that the Nintendo Switch would do half as well if they didn't use any kind of like SanDisk or Toshiba or whatever it is memory cards. I, I definitely think, I mean, what, what was, um, 
I remember having, I thinking, oh, do you know what? I've bought into a new ecosystem here because I had the Sony Ericsson like C902 or something, which used Memory Stick Pro yeah. Duo sticks, mm -hmm. which worked well with my Vita, which I bought from mm. America, got it imported before everyone else had it, not realising the UMDs were region locked. Fuck! Um, films, not the games. Uh, anyway, so I I thought, yeah, I've, I've, I've got a D, I'm, this is the new thing. They clearly launched it, but then everyone was like, but, but it literally doesn't do anything different. It doesn't do anything faster than other memory sticks mm -hmm. that are available. These normal SanDisk memory sticks that are half the price or a quarter of the price mm -hmm. do the same thing. So obviously it didn't take off. That meant the Vita was like yeah. uh, So then you were having people were buying converters and buying the proper bigger yeah. but cheaper memory sticks and so that uh, halted it. These have their own proprietary hardware in Xbox Series X. The difference though is that it's being custom uh, NVMe SSD at the moment no one else is doing that so at the moment this can do what it needs to do it plugs directly in the reason it's custom is because it, they need to spaff that data out at such a high velocity that's why there's there's, there's two parts to it as well don't, don't know if, if I skipped over that bit or whether you caught that enough there's one terabyte of storage on the console you can get a one terabyte expansion card plus you can use USB 3.2 to add uh, an external uh, a HDD so you can have games mm -hmm. on a big external hard drive which you can store them on there and you can boot them off on off there as far as I'm, I remember from reading a different article but if you want them in their full Xbox yeah. Series X beauty then you have to move it onto the, uh, the hard drive then so yes <clears throat> my worry is that you're gonna spend 500 quid on a console uh, and then you have to spend 250 quid on an SSD uh, and then you have to spend uh, on the uh, controller charging yeah. packs and stuff because the controllers still use AAA batteries, obviously, in, in a world where we're concerned about the environment and stuff. <laughs> we still have AA batteries in controllers. Uh, so, yeah, my worry is is the add-ons. Asim absolutely 100% nailed the reason on the head. The reason we have the add-ons is cost. I mean, if we're already thinking 500 quid, and we're, we're probably still being conservative with that because if you look at adding SSDs and you look at adding, uh, uh, what was it, it's like GDDR6, GDDR6 RAM, 16 mm. gig. Uh, you're looking at processors that are like on par with an i7-9700, and you're sticking all of that in a system that's 500 quid-ish. Mm. Uh, then you add a 2 terabyte SSD, you're adding more to it. So the fact that we're getting all of that, they're, they're having to leave out things like the expandable storage and, the, and the, <clears throat> the cost and stuff to keep the pricing down. I'm, I'm ha I understand it. I'm happy with it. My my only worry is that uh, it just becomes a memory stick pro duo that that is stupidly priced and either puts people off the console yeah. or puts the console off the market. And I don't want either of those happen. The ball is firmly now in Microsoft's court. What, what they're gonna what they're gonna serve back because we've got, we've got specs and everything of the Xbox stuff. Now we have absolutely no do you, idea. Do you mean Microsoft? Uh, as in. So Sony is Sony going to have expandable hard drives? Are we going to get a one terabyte out of the box? Uh, are they going to have their own? Are you still going to be able to use normal um, hard drives rather than ones that have been custom built to use for the console? Like they can basically just serve back and say, in fact, if you go to the shop and you can buy a Toshiba hard drive, a two gigabyte, uh, sorry, two terabyte hard drive, just plug it in if you want it. That's that's only going to cost you about fifty quid. Uh, if you go down to uh, the shop. Uh, if you go down to the shop, you could pick up a controller for about forty pounds. You don't have to buy batteries. It's got lithium battery inside for you to be able to charge. You can save some money there. Like they can just come back now with the the hammer blow, really, because all these specs are really, really nice. But we don't know what the competition is yeah, doing. That, yeah, that's always the worry with going first is you you showing your showing your hand. Yeah, uh, and that's Microsoft have been confident in it before. Obviously, Sony have been clever with the way they've done it in the past, which yeah. we've spoken about many, many times. Um, but yeah, the fact that they've shown their card gives Sony a little bit of time to rearrange their hand, rearrange their deck and go, actually, yeah. I think you'll find this and stuff. Yeah. Just jump back though. Um, Vern, thank you very much for the host, dude. Uh, I hope you're still in the chat. Good morning, good Appreciate morning. It. Uh, Pirate, thank you very much for the host too. Uh, both in the office today. Hello. Interesting. Uh, yeah, but I mean, we're making use of it before the whole world gets infected. Do you reckon uh, we can try to high five without actually high fiving? Do you reckon that's what? Social distancing. Oh, we, we killed the camera. <laughs> there we go. The camera got coronavirus. <laughs> God damn it. Phantom with the host. Uh, Appreciate that, mate. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Are you still here? Are you still here? Are you still up? It, was it like now? It's like 
got to be like five o'clock in the morning almost. Is it eight hours behind in LA? Something. It's something like that. I don't know. Um, but yes, go to bed. Hashtag team no sleep. Um, anyone here from Phantom Stream? Uh, good morning. Uh, here, working from home. Ah, ah, well, yeah. Well, do you know what? We'll, we'll probably all be doing that within a week or two anyway. <laughs> Is it safe? <laughs> well, that's, that's. The, I mean, clearly not, because we couldn't even manage a high five without killing the cameras. That, that's, <laughs> if that's not an example for social distancing, I have no idea what is. But uh, yeah, if you've just joined, we are talking about the uh, new Xbox Series X specs. Xbox, Xbox Series X is basically a monster game PC. It has... Ta-da! There we go. The stats on screen. A one terabyte hard drive, uh, NVMe SSD. Um, it has the ability to add an extra one terabyte through an expansion card. You've got USB 3.2 to have an external uh, slot. It has uh, on par with... Uh, what was the... It was an i7-9700 uh, processor. The mm -hmm. graphics cards are essentially better than uh, 1080 Ti's. Yep. Uh, so yeah, good bit of kit. Uh, we're just kind of like ripping it apart as thoughts and impressions. So if you have thoughts and impressions, please feel, feel free to let us know in the chat. Uh, Pirates in the office, uh, not your one. Hashtag sad times. I told you, Pirate, you're always welcome up here, mate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've got, do you know what? Do you know what? We've got a third go. chair waiting for you right there, mate. Seen... Shout out to GT Omega for all the chairs. <laughs> Uh, if you do buy GTA Major, uh, use code. I see, I see you at checkout, by the way. I squoze that into Phantom's chat the other day because he was sat on a dining room chair. He's still sat on the dining room chair. Like, <laughs> like the other one, ended up, he said he was just sat there. Like, if uh, <sighs> we sat under the mic and he'd just be playing, you see his head just go down. Like, <laughs> the gas had broken in the chair. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he sat in the dining room chair. I said, use code I see you on GTA Mega and get yourself, yourself. a little bit well, of Treat yourself. Uh, it's funny that we we have a, uh, a conference room upstairs, um, and whenever we're on the, the telephone conference line, one of the chairs in that room has a dodgy gas canister. Uh, <laughs> it's not a GT Omega one, by the way. Full full disclosure. So I'm sat there going, "Yep, yep." <laughs> Get it smaller. Under the desk. Get it smaller. Uh, my impression is that Xbox doesn't offer anything a PC doesn't, and unless they have exclusive, I may as well build a new PC and enjoy modern games. For me, it's all about the games. Absolutely. That's always my fault. <clears throat> I mean, as well, if my friends are on a different console than I am, it's not that much of an issue nowadays because we've got cross-play. But still, it's all about the exclusives. If I can't play the games that I'm actually looking forward to because we're on a different device and they're not coming out for the PC, then it's the reason why I've got a, a, a Nintendo Switch as well because you know what you're getting from a Nintendo Switch in IPs. So you can't get them anywhere else. There's, I don't remember ever seeing a, a, a Zelda come out for anything else but a Nintendo console. Uh, a Pokemon game, don't necessarily remember them coming out for anything else but a Nintendo console, barring the fan-made games that have been played on PC via emulators or whatever it is. So you know what you're getting from them, basically. Yeah, I think it's, it'd be interesting to see how that sits uh, by the end of the generation because I think that was the key difference this year. Uh, Xbox, I, I may be wrong in the marketing line, but it was something like the best place to play games or something mm. like that. Um, and... Nobody cares about where you play it. It's about what you're playing. Yeah, exactly. And PlayStation's tagline was for the players. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's the best place to play it, but this is actually for yeah. me kind of thing. And I, I mean, it's, and it's all semantics. It, obviously, it's marketing spiel. None of it means anything. But what it boiled down to is PlayStation's focus on the games mm -hmm. and having the titles is what's hands down taking that this generation for them so yeah. be interesting to see how that happens next generation see whether that's even a thing because by the end of it obviously console exclusive will still be there but if if you only buy a console for call of duty and mm -hmm. for destiny and for whatever you can play it with spike on his modded well, yeah. probably not on his modded version but on his pc version with bibby on his switch and with me on my uh, ps2 because you know <laughs> fun times yeah but do you, in in regards to being the best place to play with their tagline do you do you do you think nowadays in 2020 the likes of gears of war halo and farza beat the likes of the last of us uh gran turismo uh spider-man and potentially what God Godfell is going to be at the end of the year. Do you reckon that them games are even compatible or comparable to the games that we're going to be getting on PlayStation? Uh, There's no doubt there is going to be Gears of War coming out for the player for the uh, Xbox Series One X eventually. There's going to be a new Forza game coming out because they still make a shit ton of money. There's a hundred percent going to be more. Well, it's already confirmed that there's going to be a Halo game. Do you know what it is? Uh, for me personally, um, and it's it's. Probably entirely down to it's a subjective answer. For me, no. The, 
The re- I, the re- I'm not an Xbox fanboy or a PlayStation fanboy. Mm-hmm. I do spend more time on PlayStation because the games on PlayStation, uh, everything just kind of like changes at once. Then I was looking over at the uh, yeah. uh, the, the other monitor over there, and then anyway, sorry, Bibby's clicking on things. The man, um, but for me, <clears throat> um, yeah, I play the games that are on PlayStation because the Xbox games don't resonate with me. Mm-hmm. Halo needs some sort of reinvention for me which which they could be doing with it is it infinite is that the new one yeah um so that that could be what i need um have you played halo before uh we've kind of spoke about this previously i've played the first ones uh like X, xbox well not the first like xbox 360 gen and it was like bright green glass uh bright green grass purple lasery things and, and big double jumping stuff and as I've said many many times put on the ground put on yeah. the ground I want a proper warzone fight so that just kind of like I was like no I'll just stick with Modern Warfare thanks uh, so Halo just yeah didn't do well for me um, and then what was Gears I loved Gears of War 1 and 2 um, and then I kind of I kind of missed 3 and the same thing I usually do I didn't play 3 so I will get to it but so that means I don't play four or five because I've not played three. But also by the by the time you get into Gears Five, most series by the time you get to number five, it's just like a okay, it's more of the same. Time for a prequel. <laughs> yeah. So so I do feel. I mean, I'm I'm very open to jumping back in with Marcus Phoenix and Coltrane and all the rest. And I mean, who doesn't want to play a game where the main weapon's called the Hammer of Dawn? Yes, absolutely. Please, <laughs> but. Make it sexy. Give me something new. Yeah. Give me a repackaging of it all. Uh, and if they do that, then I'll jump back in. And I think Microsoft, if they don't know it already, I will be surprised. But I think they're aware that their titles are at the point where they have two or three and it's tedious. So mm-hmm. you take away Gears, Forza and Halo. Um, what other big first-party titles did they have? And the, the fact that Microsoft has been buying a million studios up, the Microsoft Worldwide Studios or whatever they called them, every, every E3 and whatever presentation, it's like, we've just added the, um, what was it, Ninja Theory to our roster and, and to whatever to our roster, and these are our roster. That's because they know that, okay, we have the best place to play games, Yeah. but that's irrelevant if the games that you can play there are a bit pants, and that's what they're working towards for the future. Yeah. That's not your impression. Uh, Big Zombie Monkey impression is of Elmo, but with a filthy mouth. Elmo says things and has seen things. Elmo like. Have you heard his um, Elmo impression? Oh, Spikes. Yeah. Is it good? It's amazing. Is it? Ah, oh, yeah, do you know what, Spike? Really good. Next time, next time I'm watching you uh, on, be it on stream with Beans or whatever, I demand, I demand uh, an impression. Do you know what? Do you know what? Just do one now. Get your phone out. Do a video. Send to at Ice Cream Uploads on Twitter. There we go. They're preparing for the Xbox Seven. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, anyway, anyway, jumping in, jumping in. We need to move ahead because, you know, busy day is busy. Uh, so our next article, if you do have any more thoughts and impressions on uh, Xbox, feel free to drop them in the chat. We can jump back. But for now, we're going to jump on to Cyberpunk 2077 is still on track for a September launch as devs begin working from home. Written by Emily Gira for VG247. And I have lost it. There we go. Uh, CD Projekt Red is the latest studio to implement a remote work policy during this period of the COVID-19 <laughs> outbreak. The developer confirmed in a tweet it has already begun rolling out measures to allow its staff to work from home. And this is a quote within the article saying, over the past week, we've been adapting to the situation and gradually rolling out preventative measures across our entire organization, the tweet reads. We've also been upgrading equipment and infrastructure and working towards enabling our employees to work remotely from the safety of their own homes. Remote work will continue for as long as it is needed, says the quote, uh, says the studio. But despite the change in office venue, CD Projekt maintains it's rising to the challenge and showing no signs of stopping in our effort to bring you some kick-ass role-playing action in September. And then within the article, we have the comment embedded, uh, the tweet embedded within there. Um, Most major game developers have taken similar actions as fears of a worsened outbreak mount. Last week, Destiny developer Bungie announced it is moving all staff to work from home indefinitely, followed by Rockstar and EA. Microsoft has likewise asked staff at Seattle HQ, as well as those in San Francisco, to work from home until March the 25th. Both Bungie and Microsoft are mainly based in Seattle, which currently has the highest coronavirus mortality rate in the country with 10 deaths. Cyberpunk 2077 launches for Xbox One, PS4, PC, and in about 3K, maybe 2K, probably 1K, maybe half a K. Do you know what? About 48 pixels on Google Stadia on September the 17th, 2020. Check out our full time. Blah, 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 in the angle. There we go. So, Cyberpunk coming out in September. CD Projekt Red maintain that they are sticking to that date, despite 
uh, the workforce having to work from home through yeah. Corona fun times. They've, they've clearly got the um, they've clearly got the infrastructure in place for them to be able to just say right, okay, here's a VPN, take your laptop, bosh, jobs are good. And I mean, it is it's weird that in 2020 a lot of people aren't able to do that because of the use of google sheets or google docs or google slides whatever it could be um you've got the facility to be able to work wherever you want um well i think i think part of the reasoning for that is probably um and a lot of companies whilst we work in the games industry which is a very modern forward thinking industry everything's cutting edge we're social we interact mm. everything's online on demand and stuff but those businesses are dealing with ips that can deal with all sorts of uh, uh data breaches and security and information so there's trust not only trust for mate you might actually accidentally tweet the entire thing out so you can't have access at yeah. all but also the uh mate actually don't give that to Captain Competitor because, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, so long story short, a lot of companies just think, okay, this is all very sensitive information. We don't want to give you access to it outside of uh, the office. Or not necessarily you as in actually giving it or bumbling away, cyber security. Are you at home set up enough? I don't think you are, so I'm yeah. just not going to give you access. Whereas in reality, there, there is ways that that can all be uh, taken care of. We have remote access from home. We can mm. do most of our job from home. Um, as you see on a Tuesday and a Wednesday when we scoop from from uh, Wednesday and Thursday even uh, when we scoop from home, um, but a lot of the industry is, I say not say sad because there, it comes from the right place, but a lot of the industry isn't set up from that way for fear of security or whatever. Well, I mean, morning bacon chain by the way. Uh, tell baby to check his phone. <laughs> oh God, he, he sent me a voice note. I need to vet this before I, air it. I need to vet this before we do it. But uh, as I was saying, do you think it's actually just the fact that it could be down to security, or do you think that, uh, for instance, my old job where I used to work, they would never in a million years let you work from home, despite you being able to fully do it, because they don't trust that you're going to do it. Yeah, they think you're going to be a lazy bastard and play games all day. Yeah, I definitely think that's part of it. My, uh, I, one, I won't, I won't name names or anything, but one of my previous jobs was a very digital industry that required always on sort of a role. So they required you to always be on when needed, but but they also weren't very trusting because yeah. the industry was based off of, even though we were doing the digital marketing side of things, the industry was a very hands-on yeah. industry. Um, so they were used to like building sites and jobs and, and, and you've got to be on, on the job. Yeah. Uh, so you had to always be there. It was like a... A presenteeism you had to you had to uh, be there i had to be live and present mm. and everyone has to see it it doesn't matter if you're doing your work or not but you're there yeah um it's like yeah but i'm not i'm, I'm literally i could work do my job on my mobile phone if needs be yeah yeah, yeah but that's just I mean, we want to see you doing it does it matter if it's yeah, that's what i mean there's been instances where me and you have been the other side of the world still managing to do every single part of our job without having to even have our laptops we can do it on our mobile oh, phones. there's been it's instances just... where you're at home and and like something goes down in the office and the people in the office can't work but you can at home yeah. kind of thing and it's like Aha! but yeah that so that is it's fine to listen to no swears or rudeness yeah I've, I've just vetted it mate I've, I've just vetted it it's good it's good do you want to listen to it go on then let's, have, let's go so for those of you that may have just tuned in um, Big Zombie Bunker aka Spike uh, has apparently got a world class Elmo voice <laughs> it's brilliant and I've never heard it and I challenged really? him to send us a voice note through and he has done so let's go <laughs> That's class. I told you, it's excellent. Do you know we need we need like a like a. I must say thank you for the sub. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Just have that as our sub subscriber alert. Hi, what are you talking about? Says, uh, ah, I can't uh, I was gonna say Tracy, but it clearly doesn't say Tracy. But we uh, have been talking about the Xbox One X. We are now talking about Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Is still hitting. Uh, as planned in September, despite the workforce working yeah. remotely. And, th and that is because Cyberpunk clearly, I mean, they've said quite a few times, they do have things like crunch ongoing, mm. and they are trying to, well, we spoke about it yesterday, Put, feel free to check out previous broadcasts if you want to hear us talking about crunch and our most recent stuff on that. But they have that, and they seem to be engineered in a way where they try to look after the best needs of their staff. So by not delivering the product at all, uh, so not doing crunch and not delivering it on time, his shares, which means they can't look after their staff. Yeah. By delivering it, but meaning their staff are overworking, means that they're not really looking after their staff, but getting the balance mm -hmm. of the two is what they kind of do. Anyway, long story, uh, fast forward, 
they are still releasing the game on time and are allowing their staff to work remotely from home, which is just simple. A lot of people yeah. can do it, but it's also not as simple as you think. Do you think time. it's a little bit of willy waving as well, though? So the, the likes of EA and Rockstar, and obviously now CD Projekt Red uh, and Bungie, that for that fact, all four of those are now letting their staff work from home. Does that send any message to the rest of the other video game, uh, to the rest of the video game industry, to say, look, we're able to do this? If you can look after, we're looking after our staff. Are you? I think it, it could be a bit of willy waving, but it could also be like willy deflector shield. It's like you <laughs> spin it so fast that you've got. It's like you've got all of the. Uh, uh, crunch things coming up. <laughs> Get rid of the crunch messages. So yeah, but actually working from home. So I think yes, we are demanding uh, quite a lot from our employees, but we're also looking after them too. So it probably is a bit of that. I mean, I don't know if any of you guys are signed up to any sort of uh, service. When I say service, I don't mean like I mean like retail kind of things. Pretty much everything I've got like some sort of club card or smartphone yeah. app for or whatever has emailed me this last week. KFC. McDonald's and other things that aren't food. Uh, Starbucks, Costa. I mean, usually it's things that do food stuff because it's like we are quarantining, we are cleaning down our things. So they've all put like public service announcements out saying what they're doing to minimise the risk of coronavirus. But then you've got like retail things have all been emailing me as well saying we're trying to keep our stores open, we want to keep you guys able to to buy what you need shopping-wise. And and I think CD Projekt Red have, have, uh, and as well as EA and Bungie and Rockstar and all the rest, they've all done that as well to say, look, we are still keeping things going. We are trying yeah. to keep a sense of normality, and we're doing that by being forward-thinking and mm-hmm. having remote work where necessary or where needed. Uh, they are talking about their willies. Well, yeah. there was that too. There is that too. Um, uh, well, I'm going to work today. It sounds like our shelves are bare and we have no staff left. Boss even called me whilst I was in the bath this morning. Going to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, did um, the boss know he was in the bath? Because that's an interesting conversation. <laughs> yeah. Actually, <laughs> bow, bow, hey, yeah, imagine bow. being and being like ground zero at the moment, like. It just be any any kind of them, um, any kind of B and M. It's just not worth going into at the moment. Any <laughs> supermarket, regardless of where it I is. I mean, that's a different kind of windmilling when yeah. you're going in there. Walking with the breeze. But yes, 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 yes. Uh, we have been talking about Willys. We have been talking about Xbox One X. We have been talking about Cyberpunk. But let's jump into our next story because we do have a million and one things to do uh, in the Ice Cream Blood Studios today, including a stream. We have a second stream as well, by the way, for those of you that aren't aware. Josie will be live in just over an hour or so. Uh, so we need, to, we need to keep moving. We need to get things going. Uh, and our next story of the day is focusing on Assassin's Creed Unity. It was one of the best-selling games in the world last month, and this is written by Chris Tring for GamesIndustry.biz. So the latest EMEAA charts puts Ubisoft's 2014 title at number one, which is a bit strange. Um, Assassin's Creed Unity was the best-selling game across Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Australasia, and Asian territories last month. The reason the 2014 game performed so well was because of its pricing in South Korea and Indonesia. According to press reports, the Ubisoft title was available to download via Steam for less than a cent in those two markets. Well, that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Otherwise, it was a strong month for Grand Theft Auto V. Standard. That makes sense as well. <laughs> uh, which was the top selling digital game. In terms of physical numbers, FIFA 20 was the number one boxed product. More than 10 million games were sold across EMEAA territories during February 2020, which is a drop of just over 6.7% compared to the same period the year before. But it was still a decent performance when you consider the number of new games released in February 2019 compared with this year. Last year's big titles included Anthem, <laughs> Far Cry New Dawn, and Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus. Uh, Metro Ex- Exodus actually returned to the charts during February 2020 thanks to the game's arrival on Steam following a 12-month period as an Epic Store exclusive. The game was a particular hit in Russia where it was the number two best-selling game. It was also number two in the Czech Republic and it sold strongly in Germany too where it was number six. The biggest new release of the month was Sony's Dreams which was the 10th best-selling game of the month across all markets and the vast majority of sales last month came from digital downloads accounting for almost 65% of all the sales recorded. The number one country for game sales was the UK, followed by Germany and then France. PS4 was the dominant console overall for game sales with a 46% share of the market, followed by PC with a 23.7% share. That's interesting. Xbox isn't even second in the market. Wow. The number one publisher was Ubisoft with a 23.7% share of game sales, although Assassin's Creed Unity drove a lot of that share. The firm also enjoyed success with The Division 2, Rainbow Six Siege, South Park The Fractured 
Butthole and Just Dance 2020. Nintendo d does not share digital data, and in terms of purely physical game sales, Nintendo was the number one games publisher with an 18.8% market share of all boxed game sales. Jesus Christ. And, uh, Can you imagine if they did share the digital sales and smash everything else out of the get water? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, Nintendo also had the most successful console of the month once again, no surprise, uh, with Switch comfortably ahead of PS4. The Neon Switch was the most successful individual console skew. Uh, sale, uh, Switch sales are up slightly year and year, whereas other consoles had suffered big drops ahead of the launch of the PS5 and Xbox Series X. Overall, 257,819 game consoles were sold across EMEA retail regions during February, which generated 69.1 million euros. That's a drop of 25% in revenue and units year on year. Finally, 3.1 million accessories, points card, and toys to live items were sold across EMEA retails. Uh, regions last month which come yeah, forget about all that shit so yeah numbers just dance for life says bacon chin uh, it's funny you say that because bibby <laughs> is uh, doing a just dance 24 hour stream uh, starting now go it's called, it's called fight to lose them titties <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we'll leave that on screen for a few minutes, but that is the uh, February EME -E physical and download top 20 full games uh, for the month. Um, I think this is absolutely predicted that we're not going to see as many PS, uh, not going to see any as many PS4 sales and Xbox sales yeah. down the line throughout the year. However, however, with the fact that people are locked in the house, we've had record Steam sales. Uh, and people online at the same time. Xbox apparently went down over the weekend because there was that many people trying to play on it at any one time. I expect this month, i.e. March, to have perhaps a record-breaking month in terms of game sales. I reckon we'll... we'll I mean, I was going to say, I reckon we'll see that uh, progress into um, number of stream viewers and, and things like that. So there's been a lot of worry that because of the current pandemic there'll be less money going into uh, advertising which means that content creators will be hit massively in terms of number of uh, like almost like a mini adpocalypse mm -hmm. there won't be people paying for ads so their, their money that they will get for their videos will drop but there is potentially more eyes so that could offset yeah. the drop uh, the only downside is that usually when you've got more eyes on content having a big content drop mm -hmm. makes it worthwhile so let's say I mean obviously it's not going to be because we're only in <coughs> early in chapter 2 but let's say Fortnite dropped chapter 3 there be billions of people just sat going, I want to watch this all now. You could see biggest spikes for concurrent viewers, yeah. players and all the rest. But the downside is that everyone that could manufacture Chapter 3 are all like not working 100% because they're all figuring out how to work yeah. from home or, or whatever. Or just in isolation because they're... Uh... We've got Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing coming on Friday. So we can expect massive sales across all three platforms there anyway. Uh, barring Animal Crossing, obviously, because that's a Nintendo exclusive. Um, but in terms of people, like say, watching and playing games, I can ma I can see a massive spike coming this month. A massive spike, not, is, is, not, is, not this spike. I was going to no. say. I mean, it's, it's just pr mass it's just on Elmo for us. That's big enough. <laughs> God. Um, but yeah, Dreams making it to number ten in the list as well. That's, it's good to see that a lot of people are getting a creative. Again, I can see more copies of that being shifted. I did. There was on on Dreams. I did hear. Uh, or see something. I can't remember if it was like on a video or if I read an article or something, but Dreams are now investigating, so Media Molecule, Team Behind Dreams, are now investigating how they can help people uh, that want to use Dreams as a platform to make future work. I don't know if that was something that was covered on Friday. So it's basically, basically building your portfolio inside it as, a, yeah, as, a, as an animator. Essentially, yeah. So so uh, be it an animator or be it uh, like an art worker, so yeah. someone that makes still images yeah. or be it someone as a programmer. Yeah, exactly. They, people are using Dreams to make their own uh, content because there was all sorts of questions of, do I own the IP? Yeah. So can I sell my skills yeah. or do you own it as dreams and dreams are like no no you absolutely only uh, own it we don't know enough about this yet but we are scaling up yeah. to make dreams a viable platform for you to <clears throat> present yourself which which is amazing imagine a video game suddenly becoming linkedin yeah, <laughs> for, yeah. That, for, that would be amazing uh, i've seen ninja in there good morning mate uh with uh, no, i just want to clarify it's not it's not yes it is it's not ninja yes, it is. this is the yes, best ninja is. possible yes it is a real ninja and he comes into ice cream up loads of scoop every single no, he day doesn't. We, we've got the better one we've got ninja bachelor party that's the one that everybody wants <laughs> uh, good, good morning, bud. he said with the fifa migration to pez affect fifa sales next year or nah uh and then if more of us are stuck at home will there be a bigger demand for entertainment maybe a positive for content creators i will answer this twofold 
Uh, yes, there will be a massive uh, demand for entertainment, uh, especially with us being in the PES world. We watch PES streamers and we stream PES, we get involved with stuff like that. Uh, the FIFA migration will, yes, lead to a very small set, per, set, I mean, pool of sales. It depends on uh, how long's a piece of string. Yeah. Will the, will, will the uh, FIFA migration to PES affect sales next year or not? Nah? Um, I think the only thing that affects FIFA sales is FIFA itself directly. Um, because looking at that, the top sales for February, uh, PES isn't in there. However, PES... Um, a lot of the FIFA people that were coming to play PES will be playing my club, which is free to play in mm -hmm. PES Lite, so won't have chartered in the uh, purchases, downloads, and yeah. stuff there. So, so uh, possibly, but there was also a big FIFA migration in 2015 when FIFA introduced price ranges and PES rechartered, and it was that was arguably bigger than this migration, um, and that didn't really no. have much of an impact well, on FIFA the next year anyway. So. I think the people who are who have come from FIFA to stream PES will inevitably probably buy the game to keep the PES audience that they've got because there's a lot of uh, FIFA players who have managed to accrue quite a, a large number of people watching them from the PES community because ultimately they are creating PES content. If uh, if your favourite streamer, i.e. us, isn't online, um, watch just telling me to exercise because I'm a fat bastard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, if, uh, Let's watch him do it. <laughs> that's what he's telling me to do, he's telling me to do all of these. Uh, so if if you are a pen streamer and you're starting to get a lot of people in uh, viewership wise, then you are going to carry on doing it, aren't you? Because ultimately you want as many people as you as you possibly can get to watch your stuff. If you are having more people watching you play pez than you are FIFA, then that's a massive problem. Well, it's not a massive problem; it's a nice problem for you to have. What do you do? Do you capitalise on your pez audience and try and get better with the game, or do you go to the game that you actually probably like more? I've, I've seen I've seen a few uh, FIFA content creators actually saying that. Um... And, and we're not talking the likes of the guys that get hundreds of thousands of uh, views or many thousand concurrent viewers or whatever, mm. but I've seen some of the guys that are like the mid to lower end of numbers um, saying that they might get 100, 200 viewers uh, playing FIFA, but they've got two to 300 viewers. Yeah. Not, not massive difference, but they're getting more viewers uh, playing PES. And I think that's kind of one of those things of um, like big fish small pond sort of yeah. thing or small fish big pond kind of thing um, if you're in a uh, market where you maybe get 100, 150 viewers that's that's a good that's a good amount of viewers to have that's just a very strong healthy amount of viewers um, but if if people are hitting 20, 30,000 then obviously it's, it's kind of like a, a brain drain so to speak uh, uh, everyone magnetises towards the biggest number yeah. and Twitch uh, works with that in terms of people with bigger numbers get shown to more people when they go searching yeah. for them and it's harder to find audiences and stuff but if you uh, are streaming a game that has much smaller top end in terms of concurrent viewers uh, and then you're bringing that audience through suddenly you can have a much bigger impact so yeah, yeah. it just I think I think it's it's been good I think it will be good for Pez and the good thing that, that this sort of FIFA transition, we've gone well off, uh, uh, off uh, topic, but the, <laughs> good, the good thing for this transition uh, compared to last time is the likes of Fish and Co um, and Sep and, and anyone else that's benefited from it. The FIFA guys this time have been very good at interacting with Absolutely. the community, uh, community, bringing them into their streams, hosting them after it, sitting in their chat and asking them questions. I've seen a lot of it. I've been, uh, as most of you will have seen if you've been watching some of the guys experimenting with Pez you'll probably see me in the chat obviously I'm ever present but um, yeah it's good to have seen that it's not just leeching it's like it's feeding back yeah as well. it's, it's offering the hand I mean Fish has been in a very privileged position to be able to play with the, the, the FIFA world champion and he absolutely knows the fact that it's just an absolute madness the fact that he's played with Tex Kerr, and Run the Foot Market three of the biggest content creators around the FIFA world champion for fuck's sake and you managed to play Pez with him Tex has tweeted out saying that playing a co-op on PES was the most fun he's had playing video games in a long time. Anybody who's played co-op on PES will know that it's the best way to play PES. Period. Do you know what I mean? I mean, imagine, imagine, like playing, like with with people that have experienced the top of competitive football. <laughs> And then after you've been in the Ice Cream Uploads Invitational, <laughs> yeah. going to play with, with Tex. Hey, 
You know what I mean? We're, we're the bridge that actually brings the communities <laughs> together. Anyway, on that cheesy, cheesy, horrible line, let's move forward. Let's move forward into a final article, which is written by James Bachelor once again for GI.biz, saying Gamescom prep continuing as planned despite Cologne event ban. Organisers respond to inquiries about how coronavirus may affect the world's biggest game show. And that's, that's something that's key, key to remember. E3, we always see as the signifier, the showpiece, the the poster boy or yeah. girl uh, for the games industry. Gamescom is bigger. Um, it's easy to forget that. But apparently, despite uh, a ban for all events in Cologne in place at the moment, the organisers are still confident it will go on, as the article says, and literally starts with exactly what I've just said. The organisers of Gamescom are confident the show will be held this year in August, as planned, despite a current ban on major events in its host city of Cologne. In a statement shared via Twitter, the team assured that it's taking the ongoing outbreak of the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, seriously and the health of all trade and fair visitors and partners is our top priority. So on March 10th, the city of Cologne banned all major events with more than 10,000 attendees up until April 10th. Gamescom 2019 attracted a little bit more than 10,000. It was 373,000 people. However, Gamescom 2020 is due to run from August 25th to August 29th, so the organisers believe the event will be able to continue. We will, of course, follow the recommendations of the responsible authorities regarding major events, evaluate them on a daily basis, and make our decisions after careful consideration, the statement reads. The preparation for Gamescom 2020 are continuing as planned according to the current state for the det determined date. Excuse me one second. Burp. Uh, Jesus Christ. The team, I apologise for that. Uh, That's <laughs> what happens when you get your early morning G Fuel on. Uh, the team assured that if the host venue could mess up, opts to cancel or, or postpone Gamescom, all ticket purchases from the official ticket shop will be refunded. Concerns around COVID-19 have already led to the postponement of GDC and cancellation of E3, making Gamescom the next major games event in danger of being affected by the pandemic. This hurts me. This hurt. This cuts me real deep. I know it's depressing stuff, but uh, the, August is so August is so far away that surely, surely August is so far away. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, uh, but talk about mum and grab shops, right? Yeah. <laughs> shops uh, kind of funny. It's it's it is literally so far away that it, they'd be stupid not to continue to plan it as if it was happening at that time. Uh, I don't. The pandemic won't be over by the end of the year. I really don't think so. I reckon it'll still be knocking about by the end of the year. However, uh, we may have some kind of vaccine, or it may have just dampened down a little bit. So it, they're doing the right thing to be able to look forward to August and still plan everything accordingly. Because if it does end up going and they haven't got anything planned, and they've got two weeks to sort it out. You fucked, basically. <laughs> so uh, I mean, the fact that GDC and E3 have been cancelled. They were a lot closer to the outbreak of this thing happening, so I don't think they had a choice. Yeah. Whereas this is how many months away? Four months, four or five months away? Just over four months. Yeah. Uh, so the, the key thing as well, if you look at the projection like peak charts, there's a chart that, that kind of takes in, into consideration if all relief options were implemented by certain dates, and if we start implementing relief dates, uh, relief projects now which we have doing i say we we is the world um all uh, national governments and so on um international governments should I say um they have started implementing them they expect the peak to be june um into july that's when everything will hit and then it'll start to drop off yeah. after that uh obviously that could speed up if relief gets implemented sooner it could be later if everything just starts to go horribly wrong that means if it's june july then we've got july and August for everything to, to drift off, which means Gamescom could be mm. safe. Uh, but like you say, four months away is is hugely different from two months away, yeah. which is where we're almost looking at for the likes of Gamescom. GDC will have uh, not uh, for, well, where we're looking at for E3. GDC obviously been and gone. Uh, less than a month away, we would have had TwitchCon already gone. Um, EGX Res gone, gone. Uh, so yeah, at this point in time, I could still see Gamescom happening. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a completely different place, so in it as it worked for it was last year. Not not to, not in terms of location, but the fact that you are going to see people walking in with antibacterial wipes. So before they touch the control to play a new game, they're pro, going to be wiping pro them down. Pro tip: If you're going to Gamescom, take antibacterial stuff anyway. <laughs> yeah. Always, always. I took about six bottles with me last time and came back with one. But yeah, if you're going to be touching pads and stuff like that at these kind of places, then oh god, please just take antibacterial wipes with you and just give the pads a rub down before you're touching them because. People uh, be walking around scratching their asses in line, picking their nose, doing whatever, just being, 
just being people, basically. I, I my first event where I worked, and I worked on the Pez twenty eleven stand at EGX when it was at Earl's Court when that still existed a million years ago. It might have been the year before. No, I think it was twenty eleven. Anyway, stood there and uh, she, she's probably not watching, but Jess T, um, who hasn't you haven't seen her on the show. She's part of the uh, the crew behind the scenes at Ice Cream. She was uh, more involved in the social uh, side of things then. And I remember seeing my first experience of the great unwashed at an event. Just he was doing tournament administration for some Pez League tournaments we were doing on the event. Uh, and there was a dude wandering around uh, with food all down his top, <laughs> following her, trying to get on the list for... Um, uh, the next Pez event, and when I say food down his top, it wasn't as if it was like dried on food. I mean, it was, it was, it was, but it it wasn't exclusively because this dude was stood there with a Tupperware box and a fork, just, just shoveling food into his face as it's going down his top. And I'm thinking, you are, you are touching. Not only are you touching other people, as in like they could be passing gems to you, but you're also touching people like me. <laughs> Yeah, move away with your chilli shirt. Yeah, my, my, wor- my worst thing is I have, I, I'm have i I'm kind of like a person that, that I'm quite tactile, so I'm like, hey, yeah, how are you doing? Nice, yeah? As you can see from the high five. <laughs> but I was just like, so, yeah, welcome yeah. to the... <laughs> just keep on backing away slowly, <laughs> remaining three feet of distance at every time. So, yeah, Jess T's going, this guy just keeps following me around. He was called Sean or something like that. I can't remember, but, yeah, he was, uh, like perennial shadow we had like double sided stands and he was just kind of like no personal space so Jess walked around to the other side and he just kind of like floated oh, around no. behind as well so yeah yeah fun times fun times uh, do you think we could say that drunks are suffering corona and just go to the pub as a form of socialisation yes no but yes yes because we can uh, the running of the pandemics uh, was he role playing as a menu yes he was <laughs> 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 oh, oh I, that's quality. I have seen menus with less. I've, I've seen napkins with less food in him. Bless him, bless him. Uh, when you're not aligned, watch me and I'll also help with the Just Dance. Okay, there we go. Deal, deal. Sounds good. Uh, so, Bibby will start the uh, Just Dance spectacular. Well, we've got a massive studio. Get yourselves over here, mate, and we'll uh, we'll do a, we'll do a dance a I Ring Fit Adventure just to finish it off. You know yeah, I mean? once we've got it for game for £256,000. Uh, this guy said. I heard that dreams can come true. Some bird with an eye patch told me back in the 90s. That's a Gabrielle joke. Oh, okay. It's okay, David. I'm with you. You know you get heaven. Okay, it's all right. Young, young ones, that is a song. It's all right. I'm not having some sort of seizure. That is an actual song. But uh, So, yes, as of this point in time, Team ICU could be repping Gamescom. I hope so. We will see. We will see. We don't know what the plan is yet. Uh, so, we will see. We will see. But I think that <laughs> is it for the news today. It is. Thank you very much for dropping in. Thank you, everyone, for the hosts as well. Much appreciated. Spike for the sub. Everyone else. And the Elmo voice. Uh, and the Elmo voice, yeah. Graham, like. <laughs> Although that's more like a, I don't know, some weird shit. Let's, <laughs> let's forget that even happened. Um, so, yes, if you are watching, if you are live in the channel, please feel free to think about it. You don't have to do it. Think about it. Have you enjoyed what you've seen? If you want to see more of this, then just hit the little follow button. It's free. You will get notified when we go live. And that is 10 a.m. each and every single weekday on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uplers. If you hit the follow button, you get the notifications and you can drop in. You can watch me and Babe. You can watch Josie in around 45 minutes continue her playthrough of... Is she still on Dishonored? Uh, yes. So Josie will be playing more Dishonored. There you go. Hit, hit follow now and you'll get notified in 45 minutes. That's how it works. Um... Also, uh, we have more content. Bibby potentially could be doing some Resident Evil stuff towards the end of the week because Resident Evil 3 demos out. And, and Thursday, B- yes, please. Bibby is Captain Resi, if you didn't realise that. Um, you might you might want to tune in. Do you know what? Do you know what? If you're a Resident Evil fan, it's probably worth hitting a follow on Twitter as well, at Ice Cream Uploads, wherever we are, because we may be having some giveaways themed around Resident Evil soon. So shout out to uh, the team at Capcom and Resident Evil Games for supporting us with that sort of stuff as well, which you may have seen in the past. They continue to love us a long time. Um, um, so that is pretty much it today anything you want to add before we do disappear Biberino as always feel <laughs> as, oh, what is the general one uh, is, meanwhile everyone driving down the road I'm like <laughs> Bibby just come out of nowhere as always if you do see anything knocking around in the video game hemisphere i.e. social media then do feel free to tag ice cream uploads at graham underscore day at we've got with being you on twitter with your thoughts and opinions on the video game news we'll add our thoughts and opinions on the video game news and then bring you to video game news news in the very next day <laughs> that's news to me 
Uh, worst thing I've seen in BM is, uh, B&M is a guy with a massive skid mark all down the back of his trousers and he was stood in the candle aisle smelling the candles bending over next to our uh, staff who were blah, blah. Imagine that, putting st stock Dry on the shelf ass. and just having bum stain next nope. to your face. It's not for me, Jeff. Nope, 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 nope. Exclamation mark, socials, will it work? Nope. Poor. That's, that's Bibby's fault. That's, that, that's fault. Graham's fault. He did it from home honestly, yesterday. He honestly. forgot to turn chatbot on. Honestly, honestly, honestly. Anyway, thank you very much. And as you can see because Spike's just dropped his sub, he has access to that sexy blue emote in chat. If you can't see it, well, ladies and gentlemen, that remote, uh, that remote, that emote says, stay frosty. Have a lovely day and stay frosty.